We have all seen a periodic table, an organized table of all known elements that us humans have discovered, studied, and maybe tasted. But what does any of them even do? When will we ever need to use, let's say, a boron? So in this video, I will go over the usage and some facts about the first 10 elements. So first, we have hydrogen, the most common element in the uni universe, making up around 74% of all mass. It is the lightest element we know, and is a colorless gas. But it is also very reactive and explosive. Stars like our sun use hydrogen as fuel to burn bright. The most common use of hydrogen well, on Earth is the production of ammonia, a key component of fertilizers, refining crude oil, and used as rocket fuel. Next, we have helium, which is a very unreactive gas known for giving you a high-pitched voice if inhaled and ripping balloons away from your hands. Aside from filling party balloons, helium is also used to quickly inflate airbags, used as a mixture with oxygen in scuba tanks and in extremely cold freezers. Liquid helium is only negative 269 degrees Celsius, which is just slightly above absolute zero. Next, we have lithium, the lightest metal and is very soft and reactive. The most well-known use of lithium is in rechargeable lithium batteries, but it is also used in making glass, ceramics, and some metal alloys. Furthermore, it is also used as a mood stabilizer for treating bipolar disorders. Next, we have barium, which is a silvery white metal with a low density. This element can actually be found in emeralds and aquamarine. It is most commonly used in the construction of spacecrafts, gears, missiles, and many other things in the aviation industry. Since barium has a very high melting point, it can reflect neutrons well, and it is also widely used in nuclear reactors to distribute neutrons evenly. Next we have boron, a dark metalloid that is also a semiconductor, which means that it is a conductor at high temperatures, but an insulator at low temperatures. It is an important part of cell walls and gives off a green flame if ignited. It is used to make heat resistant glass, most notably the Pyrex glass, you see in labs, and it is also used in soaps and laundry detergents. Next we have carbon, the most fundamental element to organic chemists and the element that makes organic life possible. Not only is the carbon the building block of life, it is also used in everyday things such as fuel, plastics, clothes, paper, and many more. Probably the most well-known forms of carbon are diamonds, which are used in industrial drills or sold at high prices, and graphite, which are commonly used in pencils. Carbon also contributes to climate change in the carbon cycle, which I made a video on. And lastly, carbon nanotubes are a recent invention that can revolutionize our technologies, being extremely light, tough, and excellent conductors. Next, we have nitrogen, another important building block of life, and also makes up most of our atmosphere. It is most commonly found as a colorless gas. Nitrogen is crucial to living organisms because it is the main component of amino acids, which makes up DNA and proteins. Not only that, we also need nitrogen as part of the ATP process, which is how we break down and use energy from the food we eat. Nitrogen is also commonly converted into nit nitric acid, a corrosive liquid that is used for making fertilizers and explosives. Furthermore, liquid nitrogen is extremely cold and used in refrigeration and freeze drying. Next, we have oxygen, which is another colorless gas that all of us are the most familiar with. Combined with hydrogen, it makes H2O or water, which makes up around 60% of our bodies. Of course, many of the organisms we know use oxygen as part of the respiration cycle, as both pure oxygen and carbon dioxide all require oxygen gas, which makes up 21% of our atmosphere. It is also a common fuel for fire, and it is also commonly used industrially to make steel from iron. Next, we have fluorine, a yellow-green gas which is the most reactive non-metal we have discovered. For this reason, it is made into uranium hexafluoride, which is used to enrich uranium to use as fuel for nuclear reactors. Fluorine is also used to make Teflon, a, the type of plastic you see in non-stick pens to make sure food doesn't stick, and also used to make sodium fluoride, which is found in drinking water for purification and toothpaste. 
Lastly, we have Neon, the 10th element and actually the 4th most common element in the universe. Neon signs and lasers are the most common ways to use, use Neon, as it emits an orange-red light if electricity passes through it under low pressure. Liquid Neon is also used as a refrigerant, as it can reach as low as negative 246 degrees Celsius. And that is our first 10 elements on the periodic table, and thus concluding the first part of explaining every element on the periodic table. I hope you all learned something interesting and new, and we will pick up from sodium in part 2 of the series. Thank you all for watching!